Dan, our fun uncles, we have some questions that we'd like to ask you. And I'm sure you'd all like to know the answers also. Right. Let's begin. <laughs> We've never moderated before. <laughs> Who was the first to be cast? Talk about casting the two of us first. Okay. That's what we're yeah. <laughs> Okay, who was the first to be cast? Uh, Peter. Probably Peter, right? Peter. Yeah. He is either Peter or Sean, right around the same time. We definitely, Peter, Peter said yes first. Peter said Were they your first choices? They were yes, yes. 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 Ah. They were the only two people that we knew. Peter and? Well, Peter and Sean. Peter did good, Sean made. But the um, two people that we knew. Those two were easy. I think casting the Stark girls was a really tough one because we knew. <laughs> first of all, because we knew we didn't know good people like this. They start so young, obviously, and um, but we knew that they were gonna. If the show worked and kept going for a number of years, they're gonna go to extremely dark places. So it was kind of a, a, a tricky thing casting people and just hoping that they would blossom into the women that they've become. And, and uh, I remember Dan and I were in Morocco scouting locations, and we could not find an aria. Aria, we probably looked at 300 different uh, young girls in England, could not find the right aria. And then we're, we were sitting in this hotel lobby, it was like the one place you could get wireless, um, and you're looking at the casting videos, and there's a little thumbnail picture of Maisie Williams, you know? <laughs> and there's just something about that little tiny thumbnail face that looked like it seemed right, it seemed Aria-ish. And, uh, and, and she looked we, like she was seven, back when she was 12 years old, going on seven, she looked, she was... <laughs> So we clicked on the audition video and we had to wait about 40 minutes for it to download and we finally saw her first audition for it and she was fucking awesome at it. <laughs> so so we, uh, we met her in London and she read again and, and uh, she remained awesome and then, and then we had to find the sounds and we ended up I think with three different candidates and you did chemistry reads with them. Yeah. I'm, this isn't our time to answer questions, but we'll tell you a story anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Sophie and I auditioned together. It was my second audition. Um, it was my last audition. We auditioned together, and I auditioned with two other girls to play Sansa, and I uh, was honestly just scared of them both, and then Sophie came in the room, and was like so fun, and kept giving me high fives, and like stroking my head, and I was like, this girl's great! Um, and we got on really well, and it came across on camera, which is good. Now, so you might notice that Maisie's forearm, there's a little tattoo. Can you explain what that is? I have a matching one, but it's in peach, so you can't see it. <laughs> sure. Trying to tell me something. This is the day that we got the call saying that you would like to cast us in Game of Thrones. 789. 789, which is the 7th. The 8th and the 9th. 7th of August, not the... How are we Americans? <laughs> um, so thank you. Yeah, thank you for that. Anyway. Speaking of this, which one of us do you like better? <laughs> well, it kind of depends, I think. What day today? Or like what day is it? Is it our day or an even day? Uh, no, just be honest. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the nitty gritty. Who's best? Um, He's good at fighting. Yeah, Arya's dangerous. Yeah. No, not Arya. Well, talk about the battle. Yeah, talk about Maeve and, and Sophie. And Sophie. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right, that's amazing. We're joking. We love you both. We do. We, we, we got very, very we lucky. We don't love you. We got very lucky. You said we're the fun uncles. So You're yeah. just uncles now. <laughs> I don't think fun uncle sounds good. That sounds like a euphemism or something. Barely, barely euphemism. Um, it, it, it always kind of amazes me, and we talked about this, how lucky we got. Not just that the two of them turned out to be such wonderful actresses, but, but um, that they, and, and the other actors in the cast, that we got such a good group of people. Because, um, especially when the show became successful, it, it's just, it's so easy for people to get turned by that and become total assholes. And they haven't become that way. And Kate Harrington and Alfie, like everyone has remained pretty great. With the whole you know, one exception, but, but other than that, <laughs> we won't discuss in no, no, no. the public forum. No, 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 let's not talk about Nicola here. Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> it's always kind of the worst. Yeah, she was always. It is, it's, it's the kind of 
kind of, it's not, I know, smallest violin, but it's not the easy, it's not an easy situation. The situation you guys have stepped into, it, it can be a difficult situation to navigate when all of a sudden this blows up the way it did for you, and you both completely, uh, completely weathered it and navigated it in a, in a very impressive way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, no, no jokes, no nothing, it's just it, it is very, and on the acting side of things, on the performance side of things, it's just to watch you guys become the actors you become has been very gratifying for us. And, uh, and, and also we feel very fortunate because if you weren't the actors that you are, we would have been fired. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you were the writers and creators that you are, we would have been I know, so, really right. I mean, right. We've seen you develop over the years too. It's really getting worse. It's really deteriorating. It is where we get decrepit to. He could have easily become Bieber's and he didn't, so yes. that's good. Then you'd be ready to be with the Bieber free zone. <laughs> Going back to casting. Uh, who was the most difficult person to cast, and who was the easiest person to cast? Did we already talk about the role? Yes. You were the most difficult. Yeah, we already, we already discussed that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 The, the, the easiest person to cast. The first okay. video that I clicked on was Mark Eddy's Robert Bradley video. And, and you know, there's a, there's a whole page, and I clicked at random on this. I didn't even know who it was. I just clicked on the one in the middle of, of the page. And he, his first take of his first audition tape was perfect. And I thought, oh, this is going to be easy. This is great. <laughs> Lucky to completely nail it. And that was the only time that ever happened. <laughs> <laughs> only time the first person that we watched was the, was the one. So, wow. Mark was All right, on to the next. Okay, can you, this is actually really interesting for us because we don't remember anything from this. So, can you recall any funny stories during the pilot shoot? Well, I, I, we were just talking about this backstage. When we wrapped on the pilot, um, we didn't know if the show was going to get picked up or not. So, you know, we worked on it for a long time, and, and there was a very good chance that it would not get picked up, actually, because, you know, we made a lot of mistakes in the pilot. And I remember you two guys sobbing <laughs> in the Winterfell Courtyard set. Um, and that's, I remember saying, we're going to come back, it's going to happen. And meanwhile, I was lying, I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> but there were these two crying girls, and they had to say something, so... Um... We were such Debbie Downers, that was the rap party, everyone was partying. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then when we did the rap party for season one, and I said, they weren't, they weren't legal age yet to drink, and so we said, you can't actually come to the rap party, guys, but we're going to have a special at the McDonald's in Belfast. <laughs> <laughs> A special kitty party. Yeah. 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 Special happy meal. <laughs> Any other fun stories from the time <laughs> that don't include us? Because honestly, we don't remember much. Like you guys well, there's... had a whole other life. So your your mother was recast between the pilot and, and season one. Um, Captain Stark was recast. So we had a weird thing where uh, in the feast hall scene in Winterfell, it's Sansa is talking to us when you meet Cersei, and she's asking yeah. you. Have you bled yet? Like it's a really awkward moment. Yeah. And uh, and Sophie's half of it had been shot a year earlier for the pilot, and then we had to shoot the other side on Michelle Fairley, who played your mom in season one. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, you gone from being about twelve to like twenty-three. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the the weird thing about the pilot was everyone got so much older, even though it was only a year. Like Kit looked like a little boy when we shot the pilot. And yeah. He became. It was a scene from the original pilot that we were going to use because because Kit was very good at it. And, and Peter was really good at it, but when we looked at the footage and we looked at Kit's, we just looked at photos and hanging out with Kit, you know, a year later, he looked six years older. Wow. And he was clean shaven, so he, he looked like he was 12. <laughs> There's a scene in the pilot that might be the worst scene we've ever read. There's mo probably the most embarrassing scene anyway, where it's um, the guys, the, like the, the Stark boys and, uh, and Jon Snow and uh, Theon, and they're all kind of shaving each other, they're getting their hair cut by Tommy Dunn, actually. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's yeah. a really weird scene, they're all shirtless, and it's kind of like, wait, why is this scene? And the only reason that scene is in there is because there was no continuity between yeah. scenes in the pilot, and the, the beards were all different between when we yeah, shot. to explain why. So there's a lot of the shirt, and Madden had, like, no facial hair. Yeah. So 
So they're all skating around, and if you look closely, you can tell that they're all flexing because they're shirtless. <laughs> and they all want to like flex their abs. I remember that really day. Well. I remember that they were all just sitting there doing the crunches oh. all day. <laughs> Yeah, so in Richard, they've sort all of been like obsessive over it. Paid and off and though, kids. right guys? Paid off. <laughs> yeah. um, talk about your writing process. We've just come to the end of season, shooting season seven. How would you then go into shooting season eight? Do you do a whole outline first or do you outline first. put episodes between each other and do that? Writing process. Uh, writing process. So we have two other writers on the staff, um, uh, Brian Cogman and Dave Hill. The four of us get together in a room. We, we kind of break down the upcoming season, and then we split up and, and uh, write different sections of the outline. We have the last one we'll ever do for season eight, which is kind of sad. And uh, uh, yeah, so we have a 140-page outline for it's only going to be six episodes for the final season, and then uh, we divvy up the episodes. Um, Dave Hill will write the. The season premiere, Brian Cogman, episode 802, and then we'll write the other four. And uh, yeah, Dan and I just pick halves. We kind of fight over who gets to write which half, like who gets to kill. Oh, this was, was, this was the only thing. <laughs> <laughs> right. We both wanted to kill Sansa so bad. <laughs> this was the only time. Usually we pick, it was a very, it was always a very kind of, it took two minutes to divide the halves. This time it was 18 back and forth, the email spot. Well, I'll take this scene if you take that scene, because we realized it was the last time we were going to actually be, be doing this for the show. Oh, wow. Alright, so what happens? <laughs> <laughs> you want to answer? Sons are dying. Yeah, but you guys can't tell anybody. It's only that. <laughs> <laughs> Should we just tell everybody now? Okay? <laughs> then we don't have to, we don't have to, it's a lot of work to shoot this. <laughs> Yeah, less <laughs> money too. <laughs> yeah, we, can we split the money four ways? I'm down. I'm down. Yeah. It would be great though, before season eight, we got these photographs right before we started shooting season seven. Uh, one was of Sophie with her hair, like all, you know, she's supposed to be a redhead on the show. Yeah. And, and we get a picture of her and she looks kind of like uh, Paris Hilton. So like, like her hair is all frizzed with white. And, and we're told we can't dye it red because it will oh. fall off. Literally, that's what kept it. Yeah. It was so we're like, okay, that's kind of annoying. And then we get a picture of Maisie, like two days before we start shooting. Turquoise. Turquoise. Yeah, turquoise. But who's got brown hair now and who's still got blonde hair? <laughs> <laughs> She's dead. Yeah. 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 Some are so hated, and some of the fans just love to hate. <laughs> of course, they both love our characters. I mean, they love both our characters. <laughs> I think you, since you two play the characters, you should talk about it. You know better than we do. Why do people love Maisie so much, and, and I mean, Arya so much, and despise Sansa so much? I don't care. <laughs> Question, but I'm curious, I'm more curious to know. No, your... we're curious to know what you think. Yeah, come on, with moderators. Well, I think it's different for every character, right? I mean, there's something about Arya. Arya's a rebel win, and I think people are drawn to, to people who rebel against whatever the societal structure is. And Tyler had her voice. Huh? And Tyler had her voice. She died in her turquoise. <laughs> That's her. Um, and so that one makes sense. For me, though, Sansa, to be honest here, like completely honest, like Sansa, even in the books, I remember, like, book readers would always kind of hate Sansa, or a lot of them would. And I, to me, I always loved her because she seemed like a real person. Like, she's, yes, yeah, she's yeah. really annoying sometimes, and she's like a, a uh, stuck-up teenager sometimes, but um, 
you know, a lot of us were annoying teenagers at one point, and she just seemed really believable, and also she goes on, one, to me, one of the most interesting journeys, because she doesn't start out as someone who's really sharp and shrewd and, and tough, but she becomes that person. Arya is kind of always there, you know, which is great, and that's what's great about Arya, but uh, Sansa had to, you know, had to get there by painful experience, and she's always honestly been one of my favorite characters. I think, I mean, Sansa has to face, in a way, harder choices than Arya. I mean, Arya, there's always a pretty clear path, like, what's the, what's the cool, badass thing to do, and I'm going to do that thing. That's always what Arya does. Sansa's choices, I think, are, in a way, feel more real and maybe resonate more with people's real, kind of, not black or white, but gray experience, where there's not any easy decision I have to make here, and anything I do is going to have difficult, negative consequences, and I'm going to make those choices, and I'm going to own the choices that I make. So, right. I feel, and I think that, Initially, it was always yeah. There was the the kind of the fun sister and the less fun sister. But I think as it's gone on, season after season, to me, I feel like there you guys are probably at, at parity. So, like you guys are probably in the same place in terms of like like overall love. You know? so, I mean, you could ask these people. Queen of the North. Queen of the North. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Um, <laughs> at 
by the way, if you could bring one person back, who would it be? I'm just throwing in my ad lib. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, Gurley or Lost Eric as a moderator. You can watch it when you develop. Character, character, or actor? Uh, actor. Actor. Then character. <laughs> <laughs> who, who would people like to? I mean, uh, oh, oh, there we go. Michelle Fairley is yeah. one of the great actresses, and, and uh, yeah. also so much fun. And again, uh, Jack Gleason. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Jack. Yeah. He's an excellent. Sad. He's the anti Joffrey in real life. He's an excellent, excellent human being. Good answer. All <laughs> right. <laughs> you pass. You pass. Check. Thanks, man. <laughs> Talk about the practical jokes you've pulled on the actors. And what's been your favorite or toughest to pull off, and have any failed? The easiest to pull off was, was when we wrote a scene for Kid Arrington where his, his face melted off. Um, and so he thought, because there's a scene in the first uh, season where he fights with the white and the white catches on fire and he burns his hand, but in, we wrote we rewrote the script so that his face actually melts off. <laughs> was his upper lip, his upper, he was writing his upper lip. But he didn't have to be like a prosthetic. <laughs> And Kit's got great hair, and he's very proud of it. <laughs> he's got a great power. Yeah. And, uh, and so the script and the page described exactly what his mangled face was going to look like for, for ever. And, uh, <laughs> we tell him, we told him. He was a good sport about me. You could tell he him was a really, really, really sad. He was, really <laughs> it was good acting. He was trying so hard to <laughs> not sense. show how rudely disappointed he was. <laughs> we had a whole story about how HBO thought that he felt too Disney. <laughs> too, he, felt, he felt too Harry Potter and he was just too no clean way. and I wanted to ugly, ugly him up a little. We had a routine and we gave him a routine yeah. and he, he bought it for a while until I think we started laughing. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I ruined it. I blew it. Yeah. Uh, the, the, then sometimes we write real scenes that actors think are scams, like when Sansa has to sing in season two. And so if he did not want to sing, you were, that wasn't a scam, you made me say No, I know, you thought it was. You were like, is this a prank? <coughs> and now you're so okay with singing in public that you guys are willing to sing a Bieber song for us. Right now. Right now. Yeah, we're running out of time. <laughs> Wait, but have any failed? Have you had any failed attempts at uh, practical jokes? Has anyone so called you? Bradley's, this is going to be way Bradley's worked. <laughs> we, we did. We have John Bradley because he, he's wearing the same costume. <laughs> My favorite one was probably that he was wearing, he's wearing the same costume, you know, and it's, it's just walking around in the same costume. He goes to a new place, so he was going to have a new costume. And we had the costume designer, we said just pull the most ridiculous, like Henry VIII, like crap you can find off the rack from whatever. A giant cod piece. Yeah, a cod piece. Right? Like a glittery cod piece. It was like a pinkish cod piece. Yeah. And then when, when you go into the, when he goes to the costume fitting, just put this on him and take the pictures the way you do with every, every year with every costume for the fitting. And he was such a good sport about it, but his face, <laughs> his face in the costume fitting pictures is, is my favorite. <laughs> it's my favorite image from the show is just John's face. A, like long suffering, like trying hard to smile <laughs> face where he's got a cod piece the size of like a loaf of bread. <laughs> onto his crotch. That was a really amazing photo. And props to April as well. Yes. It was our costume designer that season who 183 and you guys in the middle of such a busy schedule. <laughs> having to like pack in hundreds of extras to dress, she managed to make that terrible costume. Oh, absolutely. John. Have any of the past members ever gotten you back? Nicolai What did he do? Uh, what did he do? Well, this hair, he, he made us, he convinced us that he shaved his head. Yeah, see, as you can tell from the earlier thing about their 
dyeing their hair a week before we start shooting. We're, you know, the, the actors are supposed to look more or less the same between seasons because they're not a lot of time off. And and, uh, and he was getting annoyed because, uh, or he said he was getting annoyed because he wanted to get a haircut. And we, we hadn't approved anything. It's like, guys, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to cut my hair. And he sent us a picture, and he had shaved his head. He was like, looked like a skinhead. And this was a couple weeks before we were supposed to start shooting. And I'm like, oh, now we're going to have to get a fucking Prince Charming wig thing. <laughs> We're so angry. We're like, like we're getting lawyers. Yeah, got into it. Those agents. lawyers were calling his agents. <laughs> it turned out he'd taken a picture from like five years ago of him with his head shaved and sent it, and we were. Uh, so he he got us back. I think you guys. I think you guys should bring it though. This is the last chance you guys should see what you got. <laughs> All right, maybe we'll hassle for you. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 bring a prank, not not to shave. <laughs> 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 Oh. <laughs> <Next>. <laughs> oh, yes. Are there any props or costumes that you are planning on stealing from the set once the show's done? Uh, yes. No. And you probably can't announce it, but go ahead. <laughs> Realize all the people who make movies and television, you go in their offices, their homes, they've got all this great stuff. Yeah. Do you have anything yet? They've stolen all that stuff. It's <laughs> not their product. Uh, not that I've stolen. I have no. a lot of storyboards that Wilson yeah, yeah. gave us. Stuff that was a gift. I definitely want a sword. I don't know which. Yeah. We'll get swords. Is it stealing? <laughs> is it stealing if you technically created it? I think See, that's right. it, it belongs yeah. to HBO. But I don't know. Ask Mark. I don't know. Mark. That what? sounds very <laughs> theoretical. <laughs> I'm not a theory person. <laughs> I feel like I feel like those swords. We should have some of those swords. <laughs> <laughs> Which would you have? Oh, it's tough. Oathkeeper, right? Oathkeeper is a good one. Ice is a good ice one. Is a good one. I always uh, love ice. Like mountain cool. sword is pretty yeah. impressive because it's like eight feet tall. Uh, long, long claws. Needles, nice. Right. Long claws, cool. Mm. Yeah. Needles. So that really narrows it down. Right? You know, uh, <laughs> we're going to take, take all the swords. <laughs> oh, you know what's a really nice one actually is um, the uh, Tarly family sword. Yeah. Heart Spain. The who? Heart Spain is the Tarly family sword. Uh, uh, we've had the same armor oh, yeah. from the from the pilot Tommy Gunn, who's Tommy Tommy Gunn Dunn, who's amazing, and Charlie Sword is beautiful. Uh, talk about the inclusion of uh, musicians over the past few years. Do you ever uh, do you always agree on who you're going to recruit to be on the show? Usually, we've only had people that we both agree on for the most part. Has anyone ever suggested someone, and the other one's been like, no way? No, not really. It's mostly a lot of it has to do with who's. Everybody, a lot of people say they would like to do it, and we tell them this is so boring. Yeah. You're gonna hate this. You're gonna be sitting around for three days for twelve hours. And like Sigur Ross came on the Ooh. fourth season. Remember at your wedding? Not your wedding. The wedding you were at. No. And uh, <laughs> and the after so Yonsi, the lead singer of Sigur Ross, is he goes out. He does his like hero bit. The, he does his action, his close-up stuff, and then he's like, can I go home now? And we're like, oh no. <laughs> you're, in every, you're in 1,700 shots yeah. for the next three days. And by the it end, was he was so, so done with it. He was so done. He was done after the, like his close-up. <laughs> he was a super good sport about it. Like He, he hung out and he, he did it all. He was a good sport. but. Sometimes yeah. you guys see, like we knew that Maisie was a big fan of Ed Sheeran, so for years we were trying to get Ed Sheeran on the show so we could um, surprise Maisie, you know? and this year we finally did it. Ed, and was he fun? Yes, it was very good fun. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes Dan's a big metalhead, so sometimes... Yeah, I sneak in metalheads around. Yeah, really like just Mastodon. I said Mastodon, those guys have been on twice. <laughs> They're great guys, yeah, Mastodon. Yeah. yeah. I'm still waiting for me. <laughs> Wait on memes. Wait on memes. Season nine. Yeah. Okay. Onwards and upwards, I suppose. Okay, we think we work on the most complex series ever, but is that true? How many? <laughs> how many crew are there sh on a normal day? Normal day seven hundred and sixty-three. Some days we go up to 842. I don't actually know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> every, day, every day is different. Conviction. Every, I know, just gotta sell it. Every, every day is different. 
but it, I don't know. My guess would be that it is mainly logistically in terms of how many people. My guess would be that that would be true, but I, I don't know. Last year, or the year before? This one we just did? I think it was season six. I think we've had it a couple times. The first season we had it, I remember asking where, it was when Bran was being chucked out the window and they had a crane, so I knew there was a crane set up somewhere and a, a stunt Bran was all dressed up and they do bungee off the crane. I said, where's the, where's Bran getting chucked off the crane? They said, Unit D. And I was like, what is you? what the hell is Unit D? <laughs> and, and that's how I found out we had a fourth unit. Wow. <laughs> we had, in this year there were three visual effects units operating simultaneously for like two months. And in how many different countries this year? So Northern Ireland, Spain, Cro uh, not Croatia, oh, yeah, and then Croatia, Iceland, 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 and Canada. Canada. Which house would you identify with the most? <laughs> <laughs> Great, you always have the coolest city. Yeah, uh, the Terrells have a lot of nice stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna... <laughs> Surely everyone would want to say Stark, though. I mean, we have... It does seem a little popular to say Stark, yeah, so... <laughs> well, you don't want to be too mainstream? <laughs> <laughs> like, the Warriors have a cool city. Who's the one with the turtle? Oh, yeah. I think we kind of... Maybe you guys made fun of the turtle. Which we made fun of in season one, yeah. but you... Yeah. We cut it out. Oh, wait. Remember in season one, though? At the joust. Right, we're at the joust. There was a turtle and we lost the turtle. It's That's also that right. these, these are your childhood memories. Like, remember when we were at the joust? And we were <laughs> <laughs> the joust. <laughs> um, but who do you identify with the most in terms of like... Yourself. Oh, the last of them. <laughs> yeah, I see that. <laughs> so, really, really we want to win. Like, is that? We want to win. <laughs> is that a spoiler? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh. You heard it here first, guys. Don't go anywhere. Okay, yeah. <laughs> James Hibbert, you better be writing this down. <laughs> yeah. um, well, that's disappointing then. If you could write for one other show, what would it be? Ass Morty. Assume you would do it. Yeah. <laughs> assuming you do a good job. Assuming, oh, assuming yeah. you do a good job. That might have been a good job. I would have been a good job. Atlanta, I would say, but I would do a shit job of running for Atlanta. <laughs> if you're assuming that I would do a good job, then I would maybe say Atlanta. Alright. Well, it's always sunny. You guys made it. Always sunny. We've already done that. We've already done a shit job there. That's, yeah. that's did you write for that, though? You did. Yeah. You did? Yes. Yeah. Woo! That guy's not right, guys. <laughs> <laughs> a little Wikipedia research would have been fun. I still right. love I think most of these people don't know what grime is, do they? Who knows what grime is? Okay, see? Um, you know are people. people that know masters. It's just basically it's just bad <laughs> English rap, right? It's not no, bad it's English rap. rap. It's actually quite polite. Have we taught you nothing? <laughs> <laughs> Why are we skeptic? It's good. Why are you skeptic, Stormzy? Jeremy. Jeremy. Yeah. Anyway, guys, point is. I think it's going to blow up. I don't really do. What's you that? Guys, I think more grime is going to blow up now. Yeah, now that we've announced it, you're at this end. South by Southwest, right? Watch the Spotify charts. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Right. All right, describe the most significant way in which getting to know us has made you better people. <laughs> I have two daughters, and, and I hope that they grow up to be as um, smart and lovely as you two are, so I think it's good. And having seen, my, my girls aren't yet uh, 10 and 6, and um, I think when we first cast you guys, you were like 13 and 12, so sort of, I've been dreading the teenage years for a long time, I think as any father does, um, but I've seen two young women who grew up really, really well under difficult circumstances, you know, not difficult in terms of, you know, not starving or anything, but, but circumstances which have made other young people into monsters and you two have somehow avoided it. So uh, it's been really, it's been good for me to watch that, watch YouTube.
you know, whatever. If I keep talking like this, you're just going to make fun of me and say, well, we've got to watch you develop into old. No, I was going to say, we have all fun uncles. Yeah, you're all fun uncles. That was actually really sweet. I didn't expect you to give us a straight up answer like that, so thank you. <laughs> Answer Mark Engelberg's question because he's got the most popular question, which is uh, Is it possible to have a dragon like Walker? Maybe. Wow. It would be pretty cool looking, but it would also be sad. Like, but how's it going to walk? <laughs> it's got legs. Why fly? Yeah. yeah. Right? I don't know. Huh? I don't know if it really I goes with mythology to have a dragon like Walker. Cause, but it's going to crush, gonna crush that, that horse. <laughs> I'm gonna crush that down by Walker Horse to the so big. Yeah. Well, thank you, Mark. Uh, now there's gotta be a new most popular question because Mark's done. Sorry, I'm looking at the screen here. I'm, I'm not being I'm insane. Alright, go back to you guys. Alright, don't worry, we've only got two more left. Oh, perfect. Uh, the show's demographic skews considerably younger than that of the average HBO show. How is that possible considering your books are fucking old? <laughs> The funniest thing about that question, the funniest thing about that question, Maisie, is that Dan wrote it. What? <laughs> 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 <Good> story. <laughs> I was laughing. I thought my laugh was convincing. I was like, I'm laughing. Convincing you like I've never heard that question before. I was trying on my head. It was for them, not for you, Dan. How was, how was it? Was it good? What are you it's good. Got a good laugh. B plus, B minus. Do a good job. Right. I'm blossoming. You're developing, and it's beautiful to watch. <laughs> what will the best line of dialogue be next season, and who speaks it? Mm. You mean season seven or season eight? Season seven. Season seven. Best line of dialogue. <laughs> probably, probably Tyrion. Uh, what does he say? Something witty. <laughs> Even if that Peter, he just like he has some words, some crap line. Peter makes it funny. Uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know why you're struggling with this question because you also wrote this question too. Yeah. Why are we struggling? <laughs> I think we just like we planned on coming up with a fun answer and then forgot about it <laughs> <laughs> immediately after we wrote it. Yeah, I think we did. Yeah. Uh, we'll take another audience questions. Oh, John F's question is pretty good. When? Who's your favorite death? Who is your favorite death? This uh, isn't about us, David. Well, yeah, come on. You're moderating. You can. Okay. I have always loved uh, Viserys melting. Yeah, that was great. Oh, that was great. Yeah. That was nice. Yeah. 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 So. I mean, I like that one too. I like. Um, I liked uh, Pedro's death. Yeah. Oh yeah. The Viper. The Viper. The Viper. That was kind of amazing. Yeah. Joffrey, I thought Joffrey's death, we, we ended up going back, we shot Joffrey's death, you know, in Croatia, in that scene. We ended up going back to L.A. for two days to do just some, some pickups on, on Jack's face, because we felt like we, we hadn't taken it far enough. We got Rob Botan, the, one of the greatest visual effects, or special effects makeup guys in the history of, of the business, and he agreed to come out and help us out for two days, and he just all in fine details that he put in there I thought were really, really great. Oh yeah, they're amazing. And then who can forget Ramsey's death and, uh, and, right. and the walk away, you know, we were shooting at night and uh, I remember I sat next to Miguel, our director for that episode and, and uh, the final shot of the episode is Sophie walking towards camera and kind of smiling at the very end of the walk and I think we made you do it like 14 times. Yeah, it was like a whole day. Yeah, by the end of it, you're just sort of walking by and something like that. <laughs> and then he nailed it. The... And Walter Frey, right? right? He cut his throat. That was uh, yeah. That was cold. Thank you. Oh, hell yeah. Cold line. <laughs> Sir Marin Tramp was a good... Uh, yeah. Right? Who can forget Sir I think Sir Marin Tramp was probably our most expensive death. Speaking of fun, uncle, Sir Marin Tramp. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, why was his the most expensive? 
because all of the thing, horrible things Maisie was doing to him were all they, well, they didn't they, really do them with happen. makeup. Yeah. But she wasn't allowed yeah. to really poke out his eyes. Couldn't poke out his eyes. <laughs> oh. So every, like time, every time you see him, you, you know, you're into some pretty uh, fancy material. Oh, wow. Do you ever find yourself in real life situations speaking as the characters in the show do? <laughs> Why not? Uh, oh, God's be true. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a yes. <laughs> Saying once, I know this question isn't for me, but I did find myself. I, I said something like, I said, oh, thank the gods. And then I, I, I like, called myself and I was like, no, thank God. Oh, <laughs> you, do, you do say contra rather loud. No, I don't. <laughs> I feel like it's really I do say it a lot. But that's not from the. Sh like, you didn't make yeah, it. You don't you know, know that. No, we're British, everyone says no, cunt. <laughs> You're bringing cunt back. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> just stop. <laughs> Anonymous says, what characters would you like to see in s on screen together that so far haven't crossed past the last few seasons, or ever, for that matter? How did Anonymous jump the line? He's only got three thumbs up. And poor Caleb has 27. Why is there someone backstage who's selecting the uh, That was a really okay. nice Lara. review of her thumb. I just feel bad for Caleb because he had 27 thumbs up. Yeah. Well, we'll get to Caleb after, but right. now we should answer. Who would you guys like to see get together? No, stop. Come on. All right. Who would we like to see together? No, us. Not smelling police. <laughs> Obviously. That yeah, seems kind of obvious, though. I feel like we should avoid doing that, because, like, you know, right? How can you just think like no, this, right? Cersei and Sansa again. Whoa! What about Arya and Sansa? I feel like well, Arya is a little bit more. I'm trying well, to come up with something. If I just kill you, though, it's just like, yeah. Come up with something interesting. Anyway, moving on. Um, Caleb. Caleb asks, what impact do you think Game of Thrones has had on the portrayal of women in TV? <laughs> Ladies. That's not how it works. <laughs> it can work that way. Um, <laughs> the reason it couldn't work. You probably know better than we do. You're the actresses. You have to tell us. Yeah, but how do you think that it's changed? Have you watched another show and been like, we started that? <laughs> <laughs> Seems like you could spend a whole hour. Which any answer we made up would just Well, you want to do it's part of the movement, question. isn't it? It's part of a big movement where there are more. Yeah, you guys pick this. I mean, from the, and this comes from even from when we read the books initially. Like, we realized, you know, it's an awful world that the story takes place in, but there were more, in George's books, were more compelling female characters who, who, who had agency, who were out there, you know. They, they weren't they weren't secondary to anybody. They weren't anybody's like right hand woman or wife. They were out there and they were their own had their own storylines in this world. There were more of them than any any show we'd ever seen. Now obviously they're like the Sopranos had amazing female characters, lots of death <laughs> there. I think the it seemed like a very actress centric show before we even started the <laughs> source material. So that was you know that was a, a fun, uh, a fun thing for us, and, and it was appealing to us. Yeah. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> All right. Craziest thing to happen on the set of Game of Thrones. Wow. What's the craziest? Craziest. Thing? Well, every year something collapses. Yeah. <laughs> there was the, in Malta, the whole set blew into the sea, and it's sort of a sort of a hurricane. Was that in Malta? I think that was as well. Uh, and that stone arch, the uh, Acer window just Yeah, that just collapsed. Uh, we weren't there, so that was good. <laughs> was, and there was a rock, the rock slide in yeah. Castle Black. Which oh, yeah. didn't hurt anybody, luckily. But, oh, that's right. Yeah, Castle Black is on the bottom of a giant quarry cliff and it started to collapse. Um, and the span was like 300 foot green screen that blew over. Oh, yeah. Also, uh, that's that's nice bit. Health and safety is going to be on that ass next year. <laughs> <laughs> um, the crazy things that we've seen. Uh, I 
don't think we want to talk about it. I'm not sure if it was the pilot or in season one, um, to get the reaction from Isaac, you guys faked that something went wrong on set, oh. so that he would look scared to watch it behead him. We didn't do that. Someone did that, yeah. No, that was Alfie. Um, and it was when they were beheading... Who was it? They were beheading someone. Oh, no, it was... It was uh, is it... Wayne, Will, uh, uh, Will? Will, yeah. Will, Will was the character's name. Bronson Webb. Bronson Webb. Yeah. yeah. Right. And um, they were beheading him, and then they decided that Alfie would scream, Call the medic! And they kept shooting on Isaac. And he was Except just kind of like. Except he didn't end up using any of it because all Isaac did was look to his mom. Oh, really? He was standing right outside. Oh. And he was in not the right direction for him to be looking, but his mom no. was standing there. Wow. Rendering the shot of That's so great. <laughs> what is your favorite TV show other than God? Maisie, Sophie? It's always sunny in Philadelphia. Nice. <laughs> I just started watching the People vs. OJ. Oh, yeah, no, it's in the Bible. <laughs> What's what about the great Sarah Paulson? Uh, Sarah Paulson, Diego. Uh, well, yeah, Rick and Morty is a great one. Ooh, yeah. Love Atlanta, love Adventure Time. Well, you guys yeah. have watch a lot of cartoons. Yeah. Yeah. Haven't seen that yet. What about Archer? Like Archer. <laughs> <laughs> we only watch cartoons. <laughs> Dan Harmon is here at South by Southwest. Are you going to try to talk to him about writing for it? Uh, uh, we're not funny enough. Yeah, I don't know. Works, so that's not going to work. That's not true. <laughs> we don't want to ruin Rick and Morty. Name each of your proudest got moments. Oh, no. Um, I'm really proud that I moderated a panel. <laughs> <laughs> so you're moderating a panel, so is it? Uh -huh. That was good. I didn't hear you. Old. <laughs> My ear trumpet. Uh, what about you, Sophie? I actually. It's kind of like. <laughs> it's so serious. It's, uh, it's what came out of doing one of the Game of Thrones scenes, was like the scene after. Um, my Ramsey's wedding night. That kind of like I'm quite proud of what that brought about, and it led to a discussion about um, the taboo of rape, and um, and it turned me into kind of an activist for that. So I'm really proud of having done that and been able to portray it on screen. <laughs> We're just the mere moderators, Maisie. <laughs> With so many cast and crew. No, uh, we were asking you what your, your proudest, proudest moment was. Your proudest moment. Oh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Did you not stutter? <laughs> I mean, you should be proud of really so many moments that yeah. just felt, I don't know if it's pride, but when we were, I remember the first time we were in Iceland and we stepped out onto the glacier to shoot this thing, and there were all these people in their crampons on, like clawing their way over the ice. And it was freezing and it was beautiful, and just it was sort of a peak moment where we yeah. felt like everything had a bunch of very, very improbable. Circumstances have fallen into place in a way to put you in this very unlikely, beautiful, amazing place with all these <coughs> amazing, beautiful people. That, wow. you know, that's what I mean. That's not pride so much as sort of gratefulness that this actually happened. Yeah. What about you, Dave? I, I guess I'm just really happy that we've managed to somehow keep everyone together. I mean, it's hard on a series that goes running length of time to keep all the cast, and especially with us, we have such a huge cast. Um, and we really haven't lost anyone. I think partly it's because uh, you guys get paid so much, but, but it's, <laughs> you know, it's um, it's good because the story it's not it's not the kind of story where you, every season you start and you're trying to come up with another like okay what are we gonna do this year like we've had from the beginning a sense of uh, you know from the very first time we pitched this show to HBO we want to tell one basically a like seventy hour movie it's gonna turn out to be seventy 
three hours, but you know, still it's stayed relatively the same in terms of the beginning, the middle, and now we're coming to the end. And it would have been really tough if we had you know lost any of the, the core cast members along the way. And uh, so I'm just I'm very happy that we've uh, kept everyone together and we get to finish it in the way we want to. Particularly as you've like lost characters and then reintroduced them later on in the series. It's very nice though. Yeah, that's right, that's true. Uh, now the question's replaced with our names. <laughs> uh, I guess you don't want to hear from us anymore. <laughs> I feel like we're losing the audience, guys. We have to like perk things up a little bit and yeah. give them some big spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's holding up a laptop over there. What does okay, it say? what does it say? What does it say? A picture for the fans in Egypt. A photo for the fans in Egypt? <laughs> how, how, oh, did we just do it? We just do it. Hi, fans in Egypt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, he's back. All right. We'll do a picture for the fans in Egypt momentarily. Um, with so many cast and crew, how do you keep links to a minimum? Uh, right, our names are all over and murder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's virtually impossible yeah. to really, I mean, you look at what's happening now just with, you know, the CIA can't keep information <laughs> private. How <laughs> we so, What chance do we have? So, you know, and whenever stuff comes out, it's kind of like season one, there were 10 million people out there who had all the spoilers about Ned's death in a fucking book, and, and somehow the season still worked. So, and the Red Wedding, three years later, there were still people watching who didn't know that this was coming. So, so I'm the kind of viewer uh, or reader. I just don't want to know about stuff, and and so it's always weird to me that people want to find out. Like I, I understand there's curiosity, but but uh, I'm not I'm not someone who reads the last page of a book first because just in case I die before I finish. Like I want to be surprised by things. So. I just kind of go on the assumption that a lot of people are like me, and then people who are desperate to find out everything beforehand, they're probably going to find a way to do it. And that's, you know, that is what it is. Yeah. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Yvonne Drago loses at the end of Rocky. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Well, since we've only got two minutes left, maybe we'll look towards the future. What kind of projects would you like to do after Game of Thrones? We've got this project I've been planning called Sitting in a Cool Dark Room. <laughs> For two months. Isn't that a Game of Thrones I'm working, I'm working on it. <laughs> That's a freezing dark room. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I want cool, I don't want freezing. Uh, and we, we've discussed things, but honestly this show is such a 24-7 job yeah. that we have time to think about thinking about it, and as soon as we go deeper than that we realize we have 18 things that we really ought to be doing other than thinking about what's coming up. Are you going to continue writing together? Yeah. Or has this been enough and you're going to like, okay. No. <laughs> the uncles couldn't leave each other, could Yeah. I think so, yeah. You just you know, keep the fun uncle party going. <laughs> party going. That sounds, like a, that sounds like a really creepy yeah. party. That's <laughs> Don't you not go to the fun uncle party. <laughs> when we were talking about this, we all had dinner last time, and we were all saying that it would be that we should all go do different things. Because there's always going to be a, an urge. Well, you, you'll both be dead, but for, for the characters who, who maybe will survive, and there's always going to be like this. <laughs> Back. Temptation yeah. to keep doing it, and do like the spin-off show, or do the sequel show, and everything. And, and I think there might HBO might well do one, and I'm um, looking forward to watching it. I think it'll be great. But I think it's better for for them to get so sorry, but we're killing you. But we'd love to bring you back um, as a, as a white, as a, which our word for zombies in the show. And, and uh, he was like, he was in he was in like a bees letter somewhere. Yeah. He's like, oh okay. Yeah. And he said, and, uh, and you're gonna be naked the whole scene. You're gonna be like a naked white because your, your clothes get. There's a, he just seemed like he, he, he refused to be refused to be moved. I think probably because of whatever he was doing in a beat We didn't catch him in a state where he was going to be shocked by anything. Yeah. <laughs> he just kept going more and more ridiculous until finally he realized we were we were kidding. Yeah. <laughs> the red light is on. I think that means we're being thrown out of here. So the, the number's moving in the wrong direction. Yeah, That's we've gone happened. we've gone into minus. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, dear.